Hey everyone, it's Pete from NashvilleDoorCompany.com and in this video, I am going to give you a complete demonstration of how to install the Door Armor Security Kit. I'm going to show you how to install the door shields, the jam shield, the hinge shields, and the anti-pry shield. I'm going to show you how to do it all. And I am not affiliated with Door Armor at all. This is not a paid endorsement and this is not a critique. I install doors for a living. People ask me to install this stuff. And I think a lot of the videos that are out there are very misleading and not real helpful. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this and what you can realistically expect. And in this video, I install three sets in one house, front door, garage door, and a set of double doors. So you're going to see everything and I show clips from each one of those to show you different elements of how this stuff goes in. I think it's a good product, but I think the manufacturer's instructional video is horrible. So I'm showing you the reality of how this stuff goes in and what you can expect. And after watching all this stuff, you'll have a much better chance of getting this installed properly. They're using this door armor kit. So see this plate has a lip on it. So that goes in, you screw in your hinge with just the two screws. And then they supply these three and a half inch screws that go through the plate. It's a steel plate. And you have another three and a half inch there and another three and a half inch there. So that is really gonna hold everything in place. And then you put this one on the lower hinge. They only give you two for the middle and lower hinge. It's very hard to kick in the top of a door. So Now the first thing I recommend is putting in the hinge guards. The rounded edge of the hinge guard goes up against the edge of the jam. And these slots allow you to line up at least one screw hole on the hinge. And then they have these holes that you screw right into the jam. So just take a short screw Put it in each one of these holes just to hold it in place and then close the door to see if it operates because you need to know if you have the space. Here's another issue I found that is problematic with these. The screws don't go flush. See they stay a little bit proud of the plate and that's especially problematic where they go into the hinge. With the plate and that just that little bit of screw that's all it takes for the screw to hit the hinge or the side of the door, and then you're getting hinge bind. The door wants to spring back, and ultimately that will cause problems. So here's the solution. I use a countersink bit, and I make that taper just a little bit bigger so the screw goes flush. And be careful, you don't wanna make it too big and have the screw go all the way through it. With those done, use the provided star bit, and you can put those in. I would recommend pre-drilling that. And the screws they give you are three and a half inches and they are color matched. Now with those in and they're flush, I'm gonna test the door again before I put in that screw into the hinge. Okay, the door is working. Now with those two screws in place, I wanna use the countersink bit and countersink that hole. Because I did this before and just put the screw in there and it didn't go in deep enough and it was hitting the hinge, preventing the door from closing. And you really have to get these screws flush or below the steel in order for the door to work. Otherwise the hinge and the door hit against these screws and creates a hinge bind. So I actually had to use my uh, countersink bit to make that taper a little deeper because it was, the hinges were hitting that. Now, if you simply didn't have room, if this was hitting too much, Here's what I would recommend. It's a bit of work, but it can be done. This might sound hard, but it's not. You gotta remove this casing. Get out your razor knife and score the casing from top to bottom on both sides, and then carefully pry it off. You're gonna see the edge of the jam, and then there's gonna be a stud, and there's gonna be a gap between there. And there should be some sort of shims or something. Take those shims out and then put a new screw in here and here and maybe even behind the hinge too. And you're going to pull that jam over a little bit. Jams are flexible, so it can go like that. And you don't have to do it much. 
just put a screw in there and just sink it in. And then you don't have to put the casing back on. Just close the door, put this thing back in, and see if it fits. Once you have it for the middle and the bottom hinge, then you can nail your casing back on and caulk it, patch it, do whatever you have to do. Okay, with both of those in place, test again. The double door kit comes with four hinge shields. They recommend you put them on the top hinge and the bottom hinge. And these particular hinges have an element that adds one more hurdle to this installation. They have security hinges. They have this nub sticking out. And when the hinge closes, that nub goes into that hole. So imagine if these things are closed and that nub is inside that hole. If someone were to knock out that hinge pin and try to pull the hinges off, that nub would be stuck in that hole and they wouldn't be able to get the hinges off. There's no need for that. That is for when you have hinges on the outside of the door. But we're not gonna swap out these hinges. So what I'll do is just attach these as I should and then I'll just drill a hole where that, where that nub goes so that it can still do its thing and that's not gonna affect the plate. Just one more thing to think about. So I take the screw out of the hinge because I'm gonna put in my long screw there. And I've just got two short screws holding it in and I drilled out that hole so that nub can go in there. And I did the same thing down below. Now we're gonna test it. It binds a little bit, but it's not bad. All right, get those drilled out, we'll do a test. Let's get, oh yes. This one has a much bigger gap, so there's no binding here. So we got lucky and everything's good. One of the elements of this is the latch guard that goes over the outside of the door. And that again adds to the thickness of the door. When we have the strike plate in there, those two can easily rub. That takes up a lot of space. And I'll mark it here and I'll mark it there. And then I will remove this with the router, a 16th of an inch. I mortise this one so that it's a 16th of an inch in from the, this edge so that when this is in, it's flush with the side of the door. That's another trick that'll help you get these things in. So now that these are recessed, they are flush with the edge of the door and that is gonna give you a nice clearance when the door closes. Is this plate, you got two of them, they go over the locks. And if you just put them on the edge of the door, they can hit that other metal. So what I do is just a mortise so that it's flush with the edge of the door. And then of course, when you do that, you have to recess your bolt a little bit more as well. So with that properly recessed, then this fits in and it's flush with the edge of the door. So it's not gonna rub when it closes. They give you these two and a half inch colored screws. So you want to pre-drill that and put those in. Now those are nice and flush with the side of the door. Make sure you check your locks. You didn't screw anything up and make sure your door shuts. I put these guards on and I did not mortise the door this time. Look what happens. They rub. You can still get them shut but they rub a little bit. And also, this doesn't engage. It doesn't click into place anymore. Why not? By installing this door shield, you've made the door thicker, especially on the outside. And therefore, it cannot close completely, and that's why it won't latch. So here's how you fix it. We're gonna have to move this thing back a little bit, and that'll solve our latching problem. And here's how we solve the rubbing issue. I noticed these things are proud, see that? These things should be mortised into the astragal. That's just shoddy workmanship. So I'm gonna mortise those into the astragal. That'll solve our rubbing problem. Now that that is mortised, it's flush. Same with this one. This has been moved back just a tad. This I had to grind out a little. And now, 
the lock engages. I don't have to shove it. And that turns effortlessly. Now before you put on the strike plate, if you have one of these in place, take it off. This edge will get in the way of the new strike plate. Make sure your locks are working without issue. So the strike plate has various punch outs. You wanna get the strike plate centered. So you've got these three screws between your two locks. We'll punch out this one and this one and leave the others in place. This rounded edge to go on the edge of your jam. Push this edge up against the stop. Get them centered over your holes. And just use short screws. We're just gonna put it in place and make sure the door can open and close. And you wanna get your knob to engage first. You don't want it, you know, super tight. It's gotta be a little, little wiggle room in there, but you don't want it so loose that the, the door is shaking back and forth. The deadbolt doesn't work. We don't wanna move this whole thing. But if I push the door in more, the deadbolt will work. And that's okay, because you have all this room, you can grind this metal a little bit. It's better to have this thing too far forward than too far back. If it's too far back, you know, your lock can wiggle around like that. But if it's too far forward, you can always grind this thing a little bit to make it work, because you got all this room here. So I know that's gonna work. So now I will put in the three and a half inch screws in all of these holes. You just need to make this a little bit bigger. So we're gonna break out the rasping bit and just grind that a little bit until it fits. Basically just works like a little grinder. Just go a little at a time and then test. It's gotta go in easy, but don't wanna have to fight. That's perfect. I'm gonna put screws in here, but without shims. I just put my screw in here, since I know everything is aligned, and I just sink it in until this jam is in the position that I want with the right gap. Now that gap is a little bit big for me, but I'm putting in this door armor, so I want it a little bit big. So now that I know that's where I want it, I'll stick the shims in there and make it nice and tight. So I put my door armor plate in place with the one screw. I got to make sure it closes and still has a gap. See, it's a little tight right there, so I'll loosen this shim. I'll put the shim right behind there. So you want to shim it with your armor in place, and that's a lot easier. That takes up half of your gap. If you have an eighth inch gap, this armor takes up half of it. You have to have big gaps to use this stuff. So I shim this part and get that fit. Then I work my way down. Then I shim the middle part and get that to fit. I'm checking my gaps all the way. And that's a big gap, but you need it for this thing. So you check your gap and you put in your shims, put in your next screw, put in your shims, put in your next screw, work your way all the way down, checking your gap all the way, make sure that the door works properly. If you were installing this door armor into an existing door and you just couldn't get it in, it was too tight, it was causing problems, here's what I would recommend. Pull the casing off of the door and you're gonna have shims like this inside. Pull them out and then reset your screws in there to pull the jam over more so that you have the room to get this thing in. Instead of going right here, it goes up on the top so that your top bolt can engage in that. If you don't have the room up there, you can shave the top of the door, but it gets tricky when you have a bolt and an astragal in place. Unless you know how to reposition a bolt and an astragal, you would have to move this top jam up. Carefully cut out the casing, pry it off, and then put some screws into your top jam, screw them into your header to pull that jam up to give you enough room. If there's a plate up there, if it's mortised properly so that it's flush with the jam, leave it in. I just mortise that with the chisel. Now it'll be 
flush with the jam and our plate can go over it. We put in our jam shield. I want to push it up against the stop. Short screws just to test it. Close the fixed door first. Closes, it's a little snug. And our bolt engages, so that's good. Try our active door. And that goes. Oh, I've got these pre-drilled, ready for my big screws. The anti-pry guard has three pieces and another bit. This is the part that goes outside. And you want to center it over the two locks. But if you can only do one, just center it over the deadbolt. This is gonna screw in on the outside like this. Then what we'll do, I'm gonna drill holes into the door right around there to accept these threaded parts. So that's gonna go into the door right there. This plate goes on the inside of the door and then screws will go through these holes through the door into this plate. When the door closes, it'll end up like that so that they cannot get a pry bar in there. Because they have this commercial lock here and because that rose plate is so big, this piece will not fit in there. So we're just gonna work on the deadbolt, but you could do this for both locks. When you're positioning this plate, you have to determine where it goes as far as how close it's gonna be to the door. Because this piece is gonna screw into the door, but it's also gonna be sitting on top of this. You know, once it's in, even though it's gonna be over here, it's gonna be sticking out that much. So you have to allow for all that distance. Close the door, and then from the edge of the plate to the door, you want at least a quarter inch. I just put two short screws in there, and I'll use that to do all my testing. I need to get this positioned on the door so that it goes right between there. It's gotta have a little bit of room on each side. So I put that in place, and I just push it against the door, and I'm pulling the door toward me to get that thing aligned. And once I know where it is, see, I draw those lines so I know where to drill those holes. So I have to drill my holes right on the edge of the plate, which is gonna be a challenge. Use a bit that's a little bit bigger than the screws because the plate will hide the holes. They don't have to be perfect. So don't try to get that exact. You may have to move them around a little bit. Now I got my holes drilled and here's a common problem. They don't quite line up. They're off a little bit. So I just gotta work this one with the drill bit go up a little bit higher. Here's another issue I have with this kit. So I got the, the holes drilled out and that's fine. It doesn't matter if you go up or down on that because the plate will cover it. But you need to get this plate centered on the lock. And if you do that, look how it lines up with the screws. Perfectly centered. That is a really bad design flaw. Um, I'm surprised no one's mentioned that. I'm surprised they don't change it. You need to, you know, make this plate longer or make this thing longer. Something. Don't have them the same size. That's horrible. I had to take this bottom screw out, and now I'm going to have to put it in on an angle, which means it might not sit flush. One more thing you have to overcome. So before I put the screws in, just push that in, and it just stays in place. So that position will work. Now I'll put my screws in there. Now with that thing secure, another issue, when you have to overlap them like this, these screws barely reach. That screw is barely sticking into that threaded end. So it might be best to cut this plate right there and then put these on. Could be cut that plate on each side, but that probably voids the warranty, it might not look great, but it's working. So, now that we know everything fits, take out these short screws. They give you these tamper-proof screws. They give you another star bit that has a little hole in the top. So there it is. Now this turned out to be a little bit off. So I put a washer just behind these two to just bring this thing out a little bit because they were just rubbing a tad. And I don't want to mess with anything once that's all screwed together. 
So that's it. Now they can't get a pry bar in there. When I was installing the anti-pry shield on the front door of this house, you can see it was positioned a little bit differently. I did not have to drill into the edge of the door shield. So every door is a little different. Every jam is a little bit different. This one was easier. And that's it. I've now showed you how to install the hinge shields, the door shields, the jam shield, and the anti-pry shield. I hope this helps you with your door armor installation. Good luck. So, now that we know everything fits, 